क्लिक द बेल आइकन टू गेट लेटेस्ट वीडियोज फ्रॉम ई कीडा हेलो फ्रेंड्स आई वेलकम यू ऑल हियर हियर वी आर विद सेवन चैप्टर ऑफ माइक्रोवेव इंजीनियरिंग द माइक्रोवेव ट्रांसमिशन लाइन्स सो फार वी हैव स्टार्टेड टू एनालाइज द माइक्रोवेव ट्रांसमिशन लाइन विद द हेल्प ऑफ अ सर्किट मॉडल दैट इन्वॉल्व द लम्प्ड एलिमेंट्स वी हैव सॉल्व द टू फॉर्म्स इन द वोल्टेज एंड द करंट आई कैन से फॉर द माइक्रोवेव ट्रांसमिशन लाइन इक्वेशंस नाउ वी नो द रिफ्लेक्शन को इफिशेंट गिविंग अस द एक्सटेंट ऑफ reflected power from the incident one and also the transmission coefficient also we extended the knowledge of these two coefficients to see what exactly the standing wave is there and the formulation of standing wave ratio also we have determined there now from the line impedance and the line admittance in the previous video we have made the use of smith chart it is a graphical method to solve the problems associated with the transmission line so let us utilize this smith chart for the given transmission line in the problem statement here we are provided a problem statement that is making the use of smith chart so it starts with given the normalized load impedance z sub x l is equal to 1 plus j1 and the operating wavelength lambda is equal to 5 cm determine the first v max the first v min from the load and the vswr rho here see here the schematic diagram is also given to us to accompany the various details given in the problem statement so to read the problem statement it comes to known that the normalized load impedance value is a given value so this is zl is equal to 1 plus j1 that we can plot onto the smith chart here so one is the real part and this j1 so this is the imaginary part so r is equal to 1 the pure resistance form and x is equal to 1 it is the pure reactance form we can say so as it is the positive for the imaginary portion we can go on to the upper half of the smith chart there now after the normalized load impedance we have the operating wavelength the wavelength value is 5 cm here so as in the previous video we have been introduced to the smith chart the smith chart is having the circular scale corresponding to the wavelengths towards the generator and towards the load here so thereupon we can have a difference of 5 cm to differentiate between the v maxes and v minimas i can say here now what is asked in this problem we are asked to determine the first v max so as from the knowledge of previous videos the v max can be found on to the right hand half of this smith chart corresponding to the center marked at r is equal to 1 and the imaginary component will be equal to 0 corresponding to the reflection coefficient there so it will be obviously on to the right hand side we are also asked to determine the first v min so this will be on to the opposite that it means left hand side of the smith chart now from the load the v min and v max is are to be determined and the value of vswr so here we have considered the ratio of voltages so swr that in general standing wave ratio is denoted by rho it is also to be calculated with the help of smith chart so very first of all on to the associated diagram we find this to be the generator side this is the supply provided the voltage v sub x g for generator and this is the associated impedance the input one we can say z sub x g shown to us now from these two points there it is the microwave transmission line running and this is up to these two points where we have the load connected given the value zl is equal to 1 plus j1 in the diagram so this value is given now for the microwave transmission line we have the characteristic impedance z sub x 0 now along with for this transmission line now we can mark here lambda is equal to 5 cm another given value from the problem statement now let us have this smith chart first of all so this is our smith chart 
So the smith chart is having the wavelength towards the generator starting from 0. We can go for 0 0.04, 0 0.05, 0 0.06. So this way we can have up to 0 0.25 onto the opposite end and continues to 0 0.26, 0 0.27 up to here we have 0 0.50 after this 0 0.49 here. Whereas the wavelength towards the load we start at 0, 0 0.04 and we complete up to 0 0.50 again. So this is the axis where we can have the measurement of R values, the pure resistance and these are the constant X circles measures of the reactance values here. So upper half for the inductor portion positive imaginary and this is for the capacitive reactance portion the negative imaginary components here. Now the first step as we have been provided the value of normalized load impedance set L will be to have a marking of 1 plus J1 in this Smith chart here. So as onto this particular central line horizontally lying we have the real part to be marked it is 1 and we know that 1 is at the center. So this is the center 1.0 UTEC. Now from this center we have to go for J1. So as it is positive we have to go in the upper half here. Now on to the upper half as we see the values because of this constant X circles here. Here it is 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9 and 1.0. So this is the constant X circle having 0 0.1 here then here we have yes it is. So here we extend up to 1.2 then 1.4, 1.6, 1.8, 2.0. So this is the line that marks to that of 1.0 here. So the intersection of this circle and the intersection of this circle that has the resistance value 1 here will be at this particular point. So this is the marking we have the normalized load impedance 1 plus J1 onto the Smith chart. So the first step we have now completed. Now we have to go for the connection of this point that it is center of the Smith chart with the marked point for the load impedance here. So for that case we connect these two point so joining with the help of a scale here gives us the point onto the marking of outer circle. So here we come to have the value of 0 0.162 times the lambda here as it is the scale of wavelength towards generator here we have 0 0.162 the marking obtained by joining these two points. So this is the load point we have connected with the center of the Smith chart here. Now we come back to the problem statement here. So in the problem statement we are asked to determine the first Vmax here. So with the given details we have marked this ZL we have connected the center and we have 0 0.162 time lambda line marked onto the wavelength scale here. So for determination of the first Vmax we have to go for the right hand side of the Smith chart there. Now back onto the Smith chart here we go at the center and the marking that we have here for 0 0.162 when we go on right hand side we come to this particular location where we have 0 0.25 markings here. So I just extend the line outside here. So this will be the point that we shift from 0 0.162. So if we have this particular line the marking of load impedance onto the wavelength scale we have to shift from 0 0.162 up to 0 0.25 times lambda. So this much of marking we go for the first Vmax here the maximum onto the right extremity we can say here denoted by D1 
in the bracket v maximum here so therefore as we have obtained the first maximum with the wavelength scale marked with 0.25 of lambda we write here d1 of v maximum is equal to we have 0.25 times lambda minus 0.162 the position of the load impedance point marked so this is in multiplication to the lambda so the next step we obtain 0.088 the difference of the two here and as the lambda value is provided in the problem statement so in this problem statement the lambda value is 5 centimeters 5 into 10 to the power minus 2 we can make substitution or let it be in the terms of centimeters so here we have a multiplication of 5 into 10 raised to the power minus 2. So this will give us the value of 0 0.44 into 10 raised to power minus 2. So this is in the terms of meters or we can have it expressed as 0 0.44 centimeters as the distance of first maximum. And this is determined with the help of this Smith chart here. Getting back to the problem statement again. So for the determination of the first Vmax, the process is completed. And the answer is expressed in the terms of distance measure onto the Smith chart on circular scale. Now, the next task is to have determination of the first V minimum from the load there. So for the determination of the V minimum, we have to search the V minimum onto the left hand side of the Smith chart here. So here we have the 0.5 marking here. So we have to start at the marking of load impedance that it is for 0.162. So outside I start with the marking here and I continue up to the point where we have the marking here 0 0.5 here. So this is nothing but 0 0.5 times lambda. We started from this particular point and this is up to 0 0.5 lambda that we can mark as the distance to here. So the distance 2 is corresponding to the V minimum here. So the difference of 0 0.5 lambda with 0 0.162 lambda corresponding to the load impedance for the given transmission line we can now determine. So therefore we write here D2 of V minimum is equal to we have the maximum value 0 0.5 minus 0 0.162 times lambda here. So here we can have this particular difference in multiplication to lambda as 5 into 10 raised to power minus 2 5 centimeters here. So the difference we have calculated as 0 0.338 into 5 into 10 raised to power minus 2. So this gives the answer for distance with respect to the minimum is 1.69 into 10 raised to power minus 2 as it is distance we measure it in terms of meters in the SI system whereas in the centimeters we can express it as 1.69 centimeters for d2 distance corresponding to v minimum here so i just outline this particular distance this is the answer for the second part of the problem statement so now in the problem statement, the determination of the first Vmax is done. Now the determination of first Vmin is also done. Now we require the determination of the VSWR row here. So let us get back to the Smith chart. So in this Smith chart, as we have the center of the Smith chart at R is equal to 1 and X is equal to 0. And the load impedance has been marked at we have ZL is equal to 1 plus J1. Now we can take this much of length to be the radius and we can draw a circle onto the Smith chart. So let us draw the circle first of all. 
so we cube this at the center take this much of distance and we draw a circle that intersects the horizontal axis here now when we see this circle that intersect this horizontal axis see the point of intersection is between 2.0 up to 3.0 and as the scale we know that we start at 0 this much of length for 0 0.1 0 0.2 reduce 0 0.3 reduce 0 0.4 reduce we go up to 1.0 and this is further up to the infinity at this particular point here so this is the point of intersection nothing but 2.6 into the diagram that you can see for the diagram of the smith chart here so basically in the smith chart we have the two intersection points so this is our current smith chart one intersection point we have marked with 2.6 just now here and this is another intersection point it is nearby to 0 0.4 it is less than that so now we get back to the smith chart from the previous topic so here we have applied the conditions of z minimum in terms of 1 by rho the standing wave ratio giving us the minimum corresponding the i maximum and 1 by rho onto the left hand side of the smith chart whereas we have the z maximum in terms of rho standing wave ratio v max and the minimum of the current here so rho will of course onto the right hand side therefore the intersection point onto the left hand side we discard here and the intersection point onto the right hand side we take the value so this is the value we have marked 2.6 onto the r scale here so therefore from the smith chart the swr or vswr that it is represented as rho is nothing but 2.6 for the given problem statement so this way for the given transmission line normalized load impedance and the operating wavelength we are now successful to determine the positions of the first v maximum the first v minimum and the value of vswr that it is 2.6 so i hope the problem is very very clear to you people by the next lecture we shall be having a practice of one more problem taking the smith chart into the use for the microwave transmission line so i hope you enjoy learning the subject and also practicing for the numericals associated to this microwave engineering for more information and the details you can subscribe to ekda channel thank you